improve our item potent levels. Right here we got P, 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 and P, 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 or P. And so it's going to be a true or false, just like always. So we have true, false, and so P and P. So we got to look at these two. And so it's true, true, so it has to be true, right? It's false, false, so this obviously has to be false. And so you could clearly see that these are logically equivalent to each other. Therefore, we prove the item potent for the n. And so you can write that, we, thus we prove the item potent law for p and p is logically equivalent to p. So this is going to be true or false, right? And at this point, we, we already know the, the way we should write it. Right, it's one half of it. So it's true, false, true, false. p is logically equivalent to p. It's equal to p. If they're both true, it's going to be true. If one's true, it's going to be true. If they're both false, it's going to be false. And so we have a true, true, that's true. Both are false, that's false. And thus, we prove the item potent law for the or statement. Um, understanding it, we prove the end statement. This is our end statement. And we prove the or statement over here. That's our or. Thus, we prove the item potent law for or. Or you could say for for p or p which is logically equivalent to p. So the, we prove the item potent law for for the following statement. I mean there's a lot of ways you could phrase this and how you could write it out. It all means the same thing. It's just some are longer, some are shorter.